Hello ladies. Welcome back to part three of my my tickle tutorials on beginners wraps. Um, I was not expecting, I, I, have to, I have to say this, I was not expecting to have so much information that it needed many, many parts. I'm really thankful for you joining me in this, this journey. I'm going to do things a little bit different today. I'm going to talk a little bit about my motivation in this introduction. Um, and then I'm going to skip over to, right on over to the wraps. Um, I'm going to limit myself to one style today. That, that yesterday's was like insane with so many wraps. And um, I didn't, I don't, I don't want to have to sit through another 45 minute video. So today's motivation, I'm wearing all black. Um, I wanted to do something a little bit fancier just because I wanted to feel all fancy today. So the wrap for the day is the Marrakesh which is also really kind of cool because I'm wearing the Cloud9 Shaper, which worn back when worn backwards is the perfect size, the perfect shape for a turban. I, I'm totally liking this, this shaper. I will say that for the amount of hair that I have, I'm going to be removing some of the stuffing because I don't, I don't need all of the stuffing. So if you have long hair, you could consider taking out some of the stuffing. Um, I, I think if it's overstuffed, it tends to pull on the hair, which is not good. We don't want that to happen and ripping the hair out is no good. So after I take this off this evening, I'm gonna pull out some stuffing and work with this the rest of the week. Now, this, the one I have on right now is an extra long t-shirt tickle. I'm going to be using three different scarves with the possibility of a bonus just at the end um, of a cranberry. Here is the second scarf I'm going to wrap is the shimmery. This one is a cream gold. I'm going to, the first time I've ever tried to do a Marrakesh with our New York Brights. Oh my gosh, this one's the brown one. I love this. I, I really do. I think this will give the Marrakesh just a bit of a difference, a different look, but it still be sparkly and pretty. Lots of fun. Um, and I'm going to do, the, I'm going to do this wrap with the rainy day scarf. I really like this one. I like the, the detailing. Now I will tell you, I picked this scarf out of my collection and I built this entire ensemble. That's, this is the, the scarf my ensemble was based on. This is, this is the catalyst for the, the color story. So just a bit of fun information. All right, and for everybody who messaged me about the saffron cranberry, I am really excited that I don't have to change out into a different one. This is available in Andrea's staff picks kit. You might wanna check it out. I'll put a link to, in the description so you guys can go check that out. It's an amazing, amazing set. Okay, so. Today's motivation for color choice. I think I'm gonna talk a little bit about my, my choosing today. I'm wearing all black. I don't wear all black often. Today I just felt like it. It, it seemed like an, a really cool idea. But I chose to wear these colors because I have this great Abaya that I wanted to wear. And it has this fantastic detailing around the top. And I think that this would really look good with the cranberry, but it also really looks good with, with this. Now, I will try to take a picture of me wearing it. I need, I definitely need staff. I'm gonna say I need a photographer because I don't know how to work the, um, the phone to do delayed, sh delayed shots and taking them in the mirror sometimes just distorts the colors and stuff. So I'm gonna do my best, fingers crossed. My hubby will be home in a little while, so maybe he'll snap a photo of me. Okay, so the, also in keeping with my nice neutral head wrap, my eye makeup, I kept it really, really neutral today. My lips, very neutral. Um, I will show you which palette I used in case you're interested. I don't, I don't, have super crazy amazing makeup skills at least I don't think I do so I'm not going to be doing makeup 
get ready with me's or anything like that. Um, but this is the palette I used today to get this really neutral, really pretty look with a little tiny bit of shine. And then my lip, my lip color is a formula I'm not too pleased with. Um, I will not, I do not recommend it, but the color of it I do like. And it's a, a liquid lipstick, sorry. It's this color. It's, um, my goodness, schoolgirl. So it's nice and, and nude. Um, I think I'm just going to, st to stick with my Urban Decay. I have a, my favorite color is Hideout because it's my neutral. And I just thought I would try um, liquid lipsticks. Not so much for this. A bit of information you probably, it's random, but um, this one's cool. So I'm gonna stop chatting, stop being so, so wordy, and get on with the wrapping. Since we're using a shaper today, I think I need to go over a couple things I didn't go over in the intro. I'm gonna, just gonna be adding this. Um, when it comes to using a shaper, a few things that I noticed or that I learned. Um, washing the shaper is important. Um, if you if you don't wash it, you could get breakouts around your forehead. Um, it, it collects a lot of dirt and stuff around the velvet headband. The easiest way to do that is to take, remove all the stuffing. I hand wash mine because I, I'm a control freak. I, I don't want anything to happen to them. Other people put them in the washing machine um, on gentle with, with, by the I would say by themselves. Don't put them in with lots of other things, especially if your shaper has the Velcro. I'm going to be going in depth when I do the tutorial for shapers, you know, in my, my reviews on them. But this is important if, since I'm starting to wrap with the shapers, um, these, um, that the washing of them is important. No germs, no, no makeup, no, all that stuff gets in there and it's disgusting. So also, um, do not, do not, do not wrap with wet hair. No, it, it causes itchy, nasty scalp. You can, these will get wet. There could get, mold, you know, mildew and mold and stuff inside of the, the fluff. It's happened. It's disgusting. Um, things that I did not know when I first started wrapping. It's super important to know these things, um, especially when you're getting into the huge, the huge guys here. Um, the, the wetness gets in there and you put the, put the wrap on and, and you're holding in all that moisture. It's, it's not good. It's not good. Your scalp will hate you, get itchy and dry. And you know, I, I don't know all the, all the technical stuff. I'm not an esthetician. I'm not a hairdresser. I'm, I'm looking to find somebody to discuss this stuff with a professional so that I can be more informed and give you better advice when I do that set of tutorials for the shapers because I have a feeling that one's going to be more than one um, one video. But this one I'm gonna demonstrate because this is the big big sister to the Cloud9 I have on my head. Um, the space in here, there's a space to remove the stuffing. Just pull it out. I think the only, I think there's I think they pretty much all have, they pretty much all have the, the hole in them to remove the stuffing. So I, I recommend that when you're washing it, um, you can remove it if it's like this one is too, too tight. It's got too much fluff in it. I'm going to remove the stuffing and that's how you do it through the little, through the little hole. Again, it took me a while to figure out, oh yeah, there's a hole in there and I can take it out. Over time, the velvet bands will stretch out. So they'll become more comfortable and then after a point, I think it, you should replace it. Um, my Wendy, my, it's the black one, it's over there. 
behind me. My Wendy is two years old. Um, I think I've gotten a lot of use out of it. I think I have snapped just enough of the, the little stitches to make it uber super comfortable. I'm thinking about honestly replacing it the next time I pick up a shaper because it's, it's getting to the point where it's a little too big and I've washed it and shrink, you know, the, the velvet shrinks back a little bit, but it's never going to be the same as the brand new shaper. So it, it's just a, just an FYI, they do wear out. Um, trying to remember about the stuffing, about how long the stuffing lasts. I think I've replaced in the black one, I've replaced the stuffing once or twice. Um, but again, I'm, I'm obsessive about it. I did get it wetness inside. So that one time it was kind of disgusting. Um, but after that, I mean, that, that was on me. That was my fault. Not knowing, not to put the, put the, the shaper on my head after I just freshly washed my hair, you know, running out the door with wet hair and under the shaper. That was my bad. But, um, I replaced it another time because it got lumpy. I find there are tutorials for how to fluff up your, your filling. For me, it was just easier to pull it on out and replace it completely. There are people who replace with wool rovings or wool. There are cotton bits that you can put in there. I'm sorry, bits. I said bits. I can't think of the proper names for these things. I just don't know them. But there are so many different alternatives. I think I even tried to stuff mine with down once. Um, not recommended, just so you know, because <laughs> the feathers pop out. No matter how much you um, you seal them in, it just they're just going to pop out through here. That was the only one that I do not recommend because, of course, allergies. Some people are allergic, but the um, the polyfill is what I've been I've been using. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I can't think of anything else. If you have any questions or, or comments about the shapers, leave them in, leave them in the message box. Um, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me and putting up with my ramblings. I hope this little, little bit was helpful. So for today's wraps, I decided we definitely needed to move past the no shaper look and go with a shaper. Since I'm supposed to be wearing this one all week, this is the Cloud 9, to, to gain more experience with using it and, and putting it on my head so I can give you guys an idea of what I think about it. Um, so far, I've worn it three days. I kind of like it. Um, I will be removing some of the fluff because my hair is huge and it's a little over full and um, it's pulling just a tad right now. But that's just because my hair is too big for this particular, this particular style with all its um, fluff and stuff inside. So later today, I will be pulling some of that. But I wanted to get to the, put my words in order here. I wanted to wrap the Marrakesh today because I think with wearing the shaper backwards like this, it makes a better turban um, shape. So I wanted to go for a fancier turban. All right, so I'm trying to keep this one brief. Yesterday's were insane long. So I'm going to start with this is the extra long t-shirt, Tejol. Um, I have a, have another one. I think I made a tutorial about me wrapping this, goodness, a while back. I'll have to check in and see um, in my playlist. But this, I'm going to start out having the short end and the super long end on this side. So this is my right side, my left side. I have it just to the bottom in the back. I didn't fold it in the back. I just, you can, I don't like to shorten the scarf in the back. I like it to shorten it in the front. Now. This one is going to be crisscrossing in the front. For me, the easiest way to do that and get it to look neat is to hold my scarf out like this, fold in the front so that it just meets 
the front of my shaper. Now I'm going to take, hold out my scarf ends and swoop forward and up. So this is the movement. If you can imagine my hands coming forward and up towards you and I can take this guy behind my shoulder. I can take this, you can see my finger here, tuck it in the same thing on the opposite side, a little hard to see, but in the end it, you can see what I've done. It, it, it's very neat, very flat. So this one has a lot of scarf, a lot, a lot, a lot of scarf. So I'm going to pile it in my lap. It's helpful for me to have it piled in my lap so that it's not getting caught on everything on the floor or on the chair. Okay, I'm rambling. All right, so I'm going to cross this and hold a little bit of tension. Remember we were talking about scarves yesterday and I said do not pull too tight. There's a definite possibility with this wrap because we want to keep some, we want to keep this taut. Um, keep, yeah, we want to keep it taut so that it doesn't un, unfurl. So I've opened this scarf, this tail up a bit because we're going to be wrapping it around several times. I don't want it to get too bulky and too, too weird. So as you can see, just scooping it around back in my lap. You can't see my lap. Sorry, you have to take my word for it, but um, it's in my lap and I'm going around again, being careful not to catch this guy in with the wrapping. You can see. There's two. Okay, at this point I can drop this down for a second. Switch hands. And keeping it, keeping it open avoids all the lumps and bumps. It's just a sleeker, more put together look. Okay, so maybe get one more time around. All right, this is the last time around. I wasn't keeping track on how many times around, three, four, maybe. All right, so this is what we have. I'm gonna bring this scarf up. Now, this always takes me a couple seconds to get the, the scarf tail that I wanna do the loop-de-loop -loop with, the little half bow. I want that on top, bring it down in front, and push up through. Okay, now we don't want to make this this loop too big because this scarf doesn't have as much body as the original Mar the Marrakesh pashmina, but as you can see it spreads out nicely. This is about as big as it gets without flopping over and and not being attractive. I'm tucking in the ends like so. Now this in scarves, scarves with fringy bits, I like to let these hang just for a bit of, of fun next to my face. This one I'm not because it's not attractive. This look is not attractive. So I'm gonna take them together because this guy underneath is really, really short. I'm gonna take them together, pull them around the side, and then I'm going to find a place in the back here, I'll show you. Spin about. It'll be easier. I'm going to find the place in the back just to tuck it, tuck it in. We want to make sure it stays flat-ish when we're tucking it in. We don't want to be big and lumpy and bumpy. So we have the finished, the finished look. All right, so I'm gonna say the same thing I do with a lot of the wraps. You could totally add a pin. Leave it the way it is. It's it's just, it, it looks super, super complicated and it does look fancy. This one, comfy for every day. 
I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to pause, take this off, and get my other scarves ready. That way I'm cutting a minute or two out. Okay, the next scarf we're going to be using for the Marrakesh is a shimmery. Now, this one is just a bit of a, a an FYI. I, I typically put a base scarf underneath of it. Um, a two-in-one is my go-to. But I just want to show you it's see-through a bit. If you don't mind being able to see the, the white shaper a little bit through it, you don't need to do that. And we're doing one scarf wraps, and I don't think that would count as a one scarf wrap if I'm putting a base scarf underneath. So I'm going to start out the same way with the scarf held up like this. I'm going to, I want to get it again to the base of my shaper. All right. And this you'll see is a um, trial and error kind of thing to get the tails the proper length. Now I'm going to swoop up and forward do the same tucking. Try to see if I can get a, a good non-fringy part view of this. Okay, so using my finger to adjust, see like this. Okay, now this one's a little bit slipperier, slipperier than the other scarf. So I'm going to have I'm going to have to pull a little bit more and be more careful in, of what I'm doing. So I'm going to open this scarf up, bring it around. And then do the same type of bow. Now, I'm going to show you when I got to this point, I noticed, oh no, I'm sure this, this edge isn't as pretty. So I'm just going to adjust. I'm tucking, making sure this side is just as pretty as the other one. Okay. So again, I get to this point, I'm going to bring this piece over and up through and spread it out. Now the cool thing is with this type of scarf, I can leave the fringe, the tails hanging. This tail is too long. Okay, that's too long. Let's try again. Okay, scarf adjusted, swoop up and forward. We're doing the adjusting of the side pieces. Okay. Crisscross. Open. Around. You didn't open it enough, just adjust. All right, now we're back here. better still still a little wonky but instead of retying it I'm just going to twist this towards the back a little bit because I don't want to waste our time wrapping 10 12 times I can just cheat this a little bit to give you the look that I'm going for and show you Then you can leave it hang and it's all fancy schmancy. And I can get, this one is a little stiffer so I can get the bow a little bigger. Leave it hang or bring around and tuck away so that you have a nice fancy, 
nice fancy turban with sparkles. So come up closer. And the same thing with this one. If you want to add pins, you can add pins. I don't think this one needs it because it is really sparkly and fun. So. Okay. Now this one's going to come off right quick. Super, super easy to get off. I am going to do it with the, show you with the New York Brights. Again, it's the, the same, same principle, but every time, every scarf you use looks slightly different. One's more fancy, one's not so fancy. Okay, so. This one's slightly, slightly less wide and it is a bit bit shorter. Same principle with this. I would definitely probably I would definitely put a base scarf on if I were wrapping this. But no worries. Or just have a headband or a piece of um sari strip in the front or even a brown shaper. Okay, so again, we are opening this guy up, bringing him around. Okay. Bow, should I say half bow? When I'm doing this, I have my thumb inside the loop and I'm pulling out the edge to spread it out. And I forgot to mention that before. And that way it's, it's really open and really pretty. Again, this one's even stiffer than the last scarf. You can make sure you're not showing any shape, any shaper band in the front. Adjust. like so. Okay, so here it is kind of hanging. Just to have the small portion in the front if you'd like. You can have just one piece of it hanging and tuck away the other one like this. This looks cute. Or you can just tuck away both pieces. Again, like like so you can tuck them away and this is the marrakesh in the new york brights let me show you the back i was afraid that there would be some some bits showing in the back some of the shaper but it appears that i've got it covered okay so Excited. One more scarf I can use for this Marrakesh. All right, and I think our last one is going to be a Pashmina, the rainy day. I love this one, it's so pretty. Um, I like that it's got the the black and the brown and the gold with a pop of the green of the the teal. That's what this is the scarf I built the entire collection around because I love it. But I haven't worn it but three times, so I want to wear it more. Okay, now that I've, I've rambled on about that. Okay. Let's see. Get that right next to my face. Okay. So. Just a... This one is an extra wide scarf. I like the idea of this most likely having a little bit showing. What I did here, because we're not gonna be tying knots in the back, I, I bloused it up and I'm pulling it tight like so across the back. And then I'm going to do the swoop and forward and it should it should work out really well. 
Okay, swoop forward up. I may have to adjust the, the length of the tails, but we'll see. We'll see how this works. Okay, so you can see even right this minute, the difference in the way that the scarves wrap. And I'm going to open this tail up. Okay, and bring it around. Okay, so I have it to here. Now I'm going to make the bow. And open this up. I can probably make this a little bit bigger. Just pull it a little bit. And we have the Marrakesh. This is the way I like to wear my Marrakesh when I do it with the pashmina of any variety. And I always go back and adjust because again, I'm obsessive with the way the scarves lay. And right now I've got a little bit of a, a bubble and I'm not pleased with that. So I'm going to do a little bit of tuck and adjusting. And then here's the Marrakesh in the pashmina with the tails down, tails, tails tucked. So, okay, I hope this portion of the series has been helpful to show you a fancier wrap done with several different scarves changing the the look of it making it fancier or more casual enjoy your day and i look forward to seeing you with another installment tomorrow oh, super excited super super excited that i don't have to change this one out because this is this is my absolute favorite cranberry ever ever so um enough about that i'm so sorry <laughs> i'm rambling i'm just excited to be able to do this one um i'm doing the same thing i did with the rest of the marrakesh turbans that i showed you today um i'm going to do my swoop you know my swoop and try to give you a little bit of a view because this is a little bit of a thicker scarf You're gonna have to handle it just slightly differently. It's, it's not hard to wrap. It's a super easy pashmina to wrap. It's just a bit thicker. So I have it up here. Put that back in front. I'm gonna do my crisscross. Okay, and when I get to this point, I would typically just wrap this around like so, but I decided that I wanted a two-tone look. So I took this and I flipped it so it's you get the gold that that creamy color the creamy gold color and I folded this piece under like so and I did the same thing up here okay so the scarf is nicely open if it gets these really great accidental pleats you can totally leave them that that just adds to the beauty of the wrap but I'm gonna bring it around and I have it in this hand so that I can adjust here and make sure that everything is laying correctly I'm gonna spin around to show you the back I'm not worried about this right this minute because we have not tied yet but showing you the back just spreading this scarf out really pretty I don't want it to be all bunched up again some some slight some slight pleats are good but I don't want it all wrenched down towards the bottom here or all crunched up so you get this okay so I'm going to adjust this piece back just a little bit 
and then I'm going to tie. I'm going to tie this one a little further back this way than I have been because I've been doing it right here. I'm going to tie it a little further back. Okay, make sure my tail comes up. Okay, so I'm going to spread it out. I have brought the scarf up in the back to make the bow so that this golden, the cream gold shows. You can totally do it the opposite and have the saffron show. I just like the, the contrast. And with this scarf, this bow can be extra. I mean like extra super big because it will stand up. It's pretty, it has pretty good body. Okay, so I'm adjusting that. Pretty good body. Okay, so I've got my little tiny tail here. I'm just gonna bring the fringes down. And then you'll see, before I tuck the fringes away right here, this popped out. It's folded over. I'm just going to adjust it in. It will tuck neatly away. And you see what I'm doing with my finger just to adjust this this scarf here. It is really, really an amazing scarf. Oh my goodness. Okay, so there's that. Now I wanna tuck these tails away. Even though you totally could, this is a look. This is something that I would, I would wear. It's pretty, but I'm going to tuck it away. I've got it covering up just the little tiny tail underneath because I think folding it in makes it easier to get rid of all the fringy bits. When I'm spinning, I pulled it around and I'm going to just tuck underneath. Try to get all the fringe in. Make it nice and neat. And you can adjust this, this frill the half bow. And there you have it. The Marrakesh done with the saffron cranberry.